Hello everybody, Sanyur, Engineer, MBA on Investor. And in today's video, I want to take a look at the paper talking about CRISPR technology in the last 10 years and going forward in the next 10 plus years. Of course, a paper published by Jennifer Dauna, which obviously is the most popular figure in the CRISPR landscape. But before I do that, before I talk about today's video, I do want to mention uh, rest in peace to one of my aunties in Pakistan. I met her last year when I was in Pakistan, just over a year ago, I was in Pakistan and it's the first time I saw her and um, I heard a lot about her over the years when I was a child and, you know, uh, over the years there and it was an amazing, uh, an amazing time with her. She's uh, an amazing person. Um, so, uh, rest in peace and of course uh, it's crazy how life goes just like that right and you never know what could happen right you know one thing you know you're with someone and then the next day you know you're you know that person just gone disappear right it's crazy how uh, life is right but maybe that's the beauty of life right that there is a beginning and there's an end and that's where you know uh, people we forget that we've had ancestors we forget that you know there have been many many generations before us right that you know built this world that built things that we use today and you know one day we will pass on to the future generations right and it's just you know it's beautiful right so again rest in peace and uh, uh, thank you for everything you've done auntie so uh, i want to um, jump in today's video um, which basically talks about CRISPR technology a decade of genome editing is only the beginning and of course this paper was published by uh, Dr. Wang, but specifically by Dr. Dauna, which obviously everybody knows. And, you know, it starts off by saying that uh, a decade of CRISPR, uh, publication of CRISPR-Cas9 is genome editing technology to CRISPR toolbox and its application have profoundly changed the basic and applied uh, biological research. Uh, Wang and Dauna are reviewed the origins and utility of CRISPR-based genome editing. The successes and the current limitation of the technology where innovation and engineering are needed the authors described the importances, uh, the important advances in the development of CRISPR genome editing technology and make predictions about where the field is headed. They also highlight specific example in medicine and agriculture that will show, show how CRISPR is effectively already affecting society where exciting opportunities for the future. So obviously here we look at uh, you know, the paper and really, I think, in my opinion, the, the most important part of this paper is this diagram here that we're looking at, right? You guys can see it. Let me just minimize my face just a little bit. All right. So let's start with that. And actually, there's maybe a little part of multiplex editing at the bottom, but we'll cover that. So if you take a look at the left side, guys, uh, that's the past 10 years of CRISPR. And if you take the right side, that's the next 10 years of CRISPR. Uh, if you took a look at, let's start with the past history here and genome knockouts, you know, sickle cell therapy, we see this with CTX001, we see this with many companies having those sickle cell disease programs, um, knockout mice, you know, CRISPR modified crops, we saw that, we covered that. In 2021, we had a few research papers talking about the importance of agriculture and CRISPR, um, you know, and we've seen in an action in the UK, I believe, in Florida, there was something going on there. A bunch of places around the world that are using CRISPR as a tool for agriculture. Uh, screens, that's more for diagnostics and, you know, mammal biosciences. Base editing, which obviously um, is a big topic, is a big, big topic. Multiplex editing in the same line of thought. And those types of technologies came about in the last 10 years that, you know, people are starting to say that, you know, CRISPR-Cas9 maybe isn't enough. You know, maybe you need to specifically focus on base editing, you know. But like we repeat in this channel, there are use, and ca use cases where base editing makes sense. Then there are other use cases where I believe strongly that CRISPR-Cas9 scissor cuts just make sense, right? Look at, you know, sickle cell disease, beta thalassemia, it works, it's done. You know, we got 90 plus patients treated, dosed, potentially cured with beta thalassemia, sickle cell disease. So, but you know, maybe base editing could do better, you know, but just because you do better does not necessarily mean the FDA is just going to approve it. You know, you got to think about these types, these things, right? But look, I'm a huge fan of base editing, huge fan of beam therapeutics, but nonetheless, next 10 years, 
right? This is where we are headed. CRISPR-based uh, treatment in later stages of clinical trial, FDA approval of sickle cell therapy. I would say this could be the next, <laughs> in the next month, really, we could get an announcement, right? I wouldn't say next 10 years for sickle cell therapy there. FDA approval for additional CRISPR cell therapies. Of course, we're looking at all these programs we have ongoing. Increased nutritional value of more foods. That's really important. I think uh, there was that paper we had uh, covered in 2022, early part of 2022, I believe, uh, we did a video on this. It was actually talking about how you could modify rice or tomatoes to make them more nutritional value on, from them, right? So foods that would, you know, people forget this, like actually think about this, like eggs, the thing with the eggs going on right now, you know, you have this bad eggs around uh, the US and because of that prices are going up in North America at least, what if you're able to prevent that? What if you're able to fix that? You know, what if you're able to do that with CRISPR? And that's what I mean by increased nutritional value. I don't think it's just making them more nutritional uh, as it is, like more calories or not, not calories, but more vitamins or so on. I actually mean like, what if you don't actually have to throw out millions of eggs because, you know, they have some sort of disease or they're not fully good, you know? What if you could just, Fix that through CRISPR, you know? Just throwing it out there, right? Maybe not eggs, but the chickens themselves, right? Improving in vivo delivery. Yes, of course, in vivo is extremely important. We have CRISPR, uh, NTLA doing an amazing job with CRISPR there. Multigenic traits in more plants and animals. Animals is a topic I think that people don't really cover that much. I think um, I think it's a taboo topic to be honest with you because the way we're headed in the last 10 years, this is beyond CRISPR, right? This is just general society. A lot of people turn into vegetarian, vegans, or vegans, right? Uh, I was corrected once a few years ago that vegan is not vegetarian. So to all my vegetarian or vegan uh, listeners out there, there are vegetarians, then there are another subset, and those are called vegans, who obviously narrow down with the choices of food that they decide to eat. So people, you know, have been sort of moving away from animals. So it doesn't really make sense for companies to venture too much into this. Although I can see those big pharma companies, not pharma, uh, farm companies or meat companies to, to, you know, take advantage of CRISPR when it comes to animals. Uh, ultimately, I think we'll see a lot more with crops, with plants, with agriculture, as opposed to animals for the reason I just stated, where the society trends are going. Um, but look, I'd love to have animals that are more nutrition. You know, I love meat. I, I eat meat and I'm going to keep eating meat. And uh, I have nothing against, you know, impossible burger and again, against uh, all those brands there beyond meat. Uh, I've tried those meats. They're, um, they're great. Don't get me wrong, they're great, but you know, uh, there's something about a good steak or a good chicken or you know some grounded beef. Uh, so, disease resistance of improved crop yields. I would say a disease resistance could you know be you know applied for not just crops but also animals, right? So, really, really interesting uh, graphic. I like this type of graphic. Um, because it shows you high level where we came from. It shows you where we're going. So I think there is a, a something to be said here. I'm going to end this video by saying that I think there, there's an angle for CRISPR to achieve a lot more than just what you're seeing here. You got to remember, 10 years ago, base editing was not even in the picture. Screening was not even in the picture. Multiplex editing was not in the picture. I would argue that CRISPR modified crops was not even, you know, something that you, we thought that could happen, right? And then fast forward 10 years later in 2023, you now have CRISPR modified crops, you have screening tools from, you know, companies like Mammoth Biosciences, you have base editing taking full, full fruition there with clinical trials going outside the US and UK and New Zealand from Verve 101 for Verve Therapeutics. You have, you know, CEO of uh, Bean Therapeutics, you know, talking about multiplex editing. So 10 next 10 years, you know, I would argue there could be something else here. I would seriously argue there could be something really, really else here that we're missing out. Who knows? You know, this is one of the hardest things in technology. You know, it's the hardest thing is to predict 
future technology. Like you can predict trends, you can make high level statements like we will be saving time, you know, we'll be spending less time in front of the computer, more time on our smartphones. You could make those generic, you know, statements, but would you been able to predict an Instagram? Would you have been able to predict a, you know, a TikTok? Would you be able to predict, you know, this technology, specific technology, specific use cases where society uses? It's very hard, right? We can talk about CRISPR, we can talk about base editing, we can talk about the nutritional value of foods increasing, FDA approval of certain diseases, but what else could CRISPR do? That's the big question. That's what I think this paper is sort of tries to tell us uh, high level anyways. But I'll end this video like this, guys. I already went over 10 minutes here in this video. Again, hopefully you guys are having a beautiful Saturday here. Uh, sad news for, for our family uh, this morning, but you know, like I mentioned, things will move on and we move on as humans and we pass on and we try to leave, you know, a better life for our future generations, right? So. Thank you so much for watching, guys. As always, like this video if you have value, subscribe if you're not, and let me know in the comments below what do you guys think in the next year and years of CRISPR. Thank you.